folks are coming in. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Good evening, good evening, good evening. As folks are coming in. There we go. <clears throat> good evening, everybody. Good evening, good evening. Welcome and thank you for joining us for another installment of On the Move to Discipleship, Midweek Bible Study of St. Luke Church in Berryville, Virginia. Glad to have you all with us tonight. And uh, looking forward to our study tonight. So I'm going to, whoops. Am I at the end of the show? Why am I at the end of the show? All right, I need to stop share. <laughs> I told you every week, boy, I got I mess up something every week. So we're gonna try it again. I'm gonna share that. I need to start there. <laughs> okay. Stop share. We're gonna try it again. Why my slideshow is being funky like this tonight? Let's see. There we go. On the move to discipleship. So let's do this. Let's pray together. Ask God to bless our time. Uh, and then we will get into, <clears throat> excuse me, our lesson tonight. So would you please bow with me? Heavenly Father, we're grateful for the gift of life and thank you for how you have kept us and preserved our lives. Uh, uh, even up until this moment. And uh, we are thankful to be able to meet around your word tonight. We confess that your word is holy and we are dust. Uh, we acknowledge that you uh, have already said in your word that when you speak your word, it accomplishes what you sent it forth to do. And so tonight, God, that's, that's our prayer. Let your word resonate in our hearts, in our minds, and let it be demonstrated through our living. Impact us tonight by your word. Let the Holy Spirit challenge us and change us and convict us and convert us so that our lives would be made different and better. But more than that, that we might walk in the purpose for which you created us, do the thing that you've called and created us to do, to become the thing that you've called and created us to become. Thank you for our time tonight. And Father, we respect and we acknowledge your presence now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, once again, welcome. And uh, we're glad to have all of you who are with us on Facebook Live. And I'm going to invite you to please uh, like and share, like and share uh, tonight's uh, broadcast. Do the work of an evangelist uh, by sharing tonight's broadcast with someone who otherwise may not hear the word of God. All right, and so tonight, once again, we continue in our study, foundational beliefs, uh, and this particular um, this particular subset that we're in is the Bible. We need a word, and so if this is your first time joining us tonight, 
you need to know that we share our lesson in three uh, segments, discussion, discovery, and direction. Our discussion section uh, is an update from last week's lesson or an icebreaker to get us thinking around our subject matter. Our discovery section is where we engage the word of God to see what the Bible has to say about our subject matter. And the direction section is a take home piece for us to consider and, care, uh, and prayerfully contemplate our subject matter over the next seven days. So discussion, discovery, direction, that's how we roll out our lesson. Usually we'll have a talk to me slide. Uh, this slide will uh, invite you to join me directly in live uh, conversation and discussion. Uh, we won't have any slides tonight that say talk to me, uh, but I will at intervals invite you to jump into the conversation with me tonight. Now, of course, uh, if you're with us on Facebook Live, uh, we know that you cannot audibly join us, but you can join the discussion by writing your uh, thoughts into the comments, uh, and we will do our best to make sure that we read and acknowledge those comments related to the, you know, to the discussion questions that we asked tonight. And so having said that, uh, we hit uh, the first segment of our lesson tonight, and that is discussion. And we have raised this, we have raised this as our, uh, as our theme uh, related to the word of God. We said that the Bible is God's revelation of himself to man. That the Bible is God's revelation of himself to man. And what we said is, is that through the Bible, through the word of God, God makes himself known to us, his mind, his heart, his character, he makes that known to us through his words. If you want to know the mind of God, you've got to go to the word of God. If you want to know the heart of God, you've got to go to the word of God. If you want to know the character of God, you've got to go to the word of God. You cannot compare the character of God to human character. Although we are created in his image and in his likeness, you, you, you want to understand this, that we are imperfect. We are imperfect. We are marred. Uh, we are imperfect. And so we cannot in and of ourselves rightly um, represent the full character of God. If you want to know his character fully, if you want to know his perfect traits, then you've got to go and meet him through the word of God. So the Bible, the Bible, the Bible is God's revelation of himself to man. Uh, and uh, if you remember, we stole we stole that saying from uh, Pastor Charles Stanley, you know, how much do we love God as much as we love his word? Uh, how much, you know, how much do we trust God as much as we trust his word? How much do we know about God as much as we know about his word? And so our emphasis here is to make the word of God, to make the word of God priority for us. And so what we say related to that, that there are at least five recurring revelatory things, revelatory, revelation, revealed. There are at least five recurring revelatory themes in scripture, at least five. This list is not exhausted, all right? And so we said that the, that, that the Bible uh, gives us the revelation of God's character, all right? And for the past two weeks, we have looked at uh, verses in scripture, uh, and you were challenged this past week uh, in our direction section to do your own personal study and make a list of uh, God's character as revealed in scripture. We also said that the, uh, that the Bible gives us the revelation of divine judgment for sin and disobedience, all right? And that's where we're going to embark upon tonight, all right? The revelation of divine judgment for sin and disobedience. All right, then we said that uh, the Bible gives us the revelation of divine blessing for faith 
and obedience. Uh, we said that the Bible gives us the revelation of the Lord Jesus, the Christ, and his sacrifice for sin. And finally, we said that the Bible gives us the revelation of the kingdom and glory of the Lord Jesus, the Christ. And so tonight, 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 uh, for the past two sessions, we have observed in scripture a few of God's attributes, a few of his character traits. Uh, and I hope that that is um, a study that you will continue um, a Bible search that you will not give up on because uh, God's character is revealed throughout the whole of scripture. And the great thing about uh, God's character is that uh, in spaces where his people need him, he becomes that attribute for them. I love it. I love it. I love it. <clears throat> All right. And we learn, watch this, that God is we looked at this last week, one of his character traits, that God is just, he is right, all right? If God is just, if God is right, then the corresponding act to his justness or his rightness is judgment. <coughs> Excuse me, all right? The corresponding act, to God being just, to God being right, is judgment. And so God, watch this, the Bible reveals to us God's divine judgment for sin and disobedience. And that's where we find our place tonight in our study. Hopefully you have your Bible with you tonight and uh, you got your pad and your pen and uh, you ready uh, to get into this lesson with me this evening. All right, so here we go. As we start tonight, the revelation of, of divine judgment for sin and disobedience. All right, that's where we are tonight. Uh, the Bible gives us the revelation of divine judgment for sin and disobedience. Y'all got it? All right, let's move forward. <clears throat> a judge, all right, a judge, a judge. And um, let me just say, that uh, in my other profession, uh, in the other work that I do, I sit before judges with some frequency. Um, but look, a judge, a judge is one who is charged with the administration of justice, all right? A judge is one who is charged with the administration of justice. One more time, a judge is one who is charged with the administration of justice. With God as our judge. You know, the, the folks, the folks that I the folks that I sit in front of um because of because of where I live and work, um, our standard of justice, at least for the state, because I I only sit, you know, locally. I, we don't we don't do any federal stuff, and so the standard of justice for us 
is the West Virginia code, all right, and the work that I do. Our standard is the West Virginia code. And so our attorneys, when, when our attorneys uh, argue for their clients or our attorneys argue for the children that they represent, um, they, they use the standard of justice for the state of West Virginia, which is that West Virginia code. Everybody got it? All right. Excuse me, if we were in, you know, if we were in federal court, then the code would be whatever the federal standard is. Not the state standard, but the federal standard. Does everybody get that? All right. But if God is our divine judge, all right. If he is our divine judge. What is the standard of justice uh, that he uses? And the standard of justice that God uses to weigh all things is the word of God. You want to get this. The word of God is the standard of justice by which God weighs all things. All right, hey, Facebook, if you got that, hit that thumbs up for me. Let me know that you're with me tonight. The word of God is the standard of justice by which God weighs all things. I need you to get that tonight. The word of God is the standard. All right. If you go back and you read in Old Testament time, and you hear God declare an oath. As a matter of fact, if you go back and you look in the Abrahamic story in particular, thank you, Holy Spirit. You go back and you look in the Abrahamic story in that narrative about Abraham, uh, God takes an oath, right? And the standard by which he takes the oath, get this, he takes the oath by himself. In other words, he says, uh, he, he says in the language of King James, I swear by myself that I will do such and such a thing, All right? And the standard for that is the word that he speaks. Come on, help me here. All right. The place, listen, you want to get this. <clears throat> and hopefully this helps somebody tonight to understand where the real source of our power is. All right. The real source of our power as Christ followers, get this, is in the word that God speaks and spoke. Do you get that? And so, and so watch this. You can decree and declare all you want to, but if you are not decreeing and declaring what God has already spoken, there's no power behind your declaration. The word of God is the standard. Come on, help me. It won't be so because I say it's so. No, it'll be so because God said it is so. I just, I, I just, I need to help somebody tonight. All right. Now, please, you know, please don't get offended for all my decree and declare folks. Don't get offended uh, because I use that, but I just, I'm trying to help somebody tonight to understand that just because I say a thing doesn't make a thing a God thing. Wow. And so watch this. The word of God is the standard of justice by which God weighs all things. 
And so, and so when you listen, when you read in Romans chapter six and verse 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. What is the standard by which God moved on the tables of Paul's heart to write those words? The standard is what God had already said, what God had already stated, that we are imperfect people, incapable in and of ourselves in our own strength to do what is right before God. The, watch this. The prophet had already said that all of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags before God. Y'all come on here tonight. And so if that is the standard of the word of God, then watch this. All of us fall short. Does that make sense? All right. So the word of God is the standard of justice by which God weighs all things. I want you to turn your Bibles to Psalm 19. Psalm 19. And I got to be very honest with you. I I had, I really had no, I was, I was looking in a totally different direction for our lesson tonight. Totally different. Totally different. <clears throat> I want you to, I want you to, to hear these verses. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to read these verses together, but then I want to look at them separately. All right, I'm going to read them together, but then I want to kind of pick them apart just a little bit. Okay? So Psalm 19, Psalm 19, starting at verse 7, and I'm reading from the Christian Standard Bible. In fact, you know what? Before I read from the Christian Standard Bible, let me read it from King James Version. Let me read it from King James Version because I know quite a few, quite a few of you who are with us tonight still use the King James. So King James Version says this. The law, uh, Psalm 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is pure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Verse 11, moreover by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. All right, that's Psalm 19, verses 7 through 11, King James Version. Got it? Now, let me read it from the Christian Standard Bible. The instruction of the Lord is perfect, renewing one's life. The testimony of the Lord is trustworthy, making the inexperienced wise. The precepts of the Lord are right, making the heart glad. The command of the Lord is radiant, making the eyes light up. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are reliable and altogether righteous. They are more desirable than gold, than an abundance of pure gold, and sweeter than honey dripping from a honeycomb. In addition, your servant is warned by them, and in keeping them, there is an abundant reward. Psalm 19, verses 7 through 11 from the Christian Standard Bible, all right? Now, 
Hopefully you've got your pen and your pad with you. We're going, we're going, we're going to um, take these verses kind of uh, one by one, at least verses seven through nine. We're going to take them one by one. And this is what I want you to identify. I want you to, I want you to make a list of how the word of God is described. All right. What, what is the synonym used for the word of God? So let me, let me give it to you. So like in Psalm 19, it says the law of the Lord. Okay. The word law is the synonym for the word of God. Okay. You got it. If you're reading King James, if you're reading CSB or another translation, that word instruction is the synonym used for the word of God. Right. And then next to it, I want you to write the descriptive that goes with it. All right. The adjective. And so it says the instruction of the Lord is perfect. You see, so you'll write instruction and then you'll write perfect. You got it. OK, so the instruction of the Lord is perfect, renewing one's life. The testimony of the Lord is trustworthy making the inexperienced wise, all right? So you should have four words. You should have four words written down from verse number seven, all right? Four words written down from verse number seven. All right, now I'm gonna go to verse eight. Verse eight, the precepts of the Lord are right, making the heart glad. The command of the Lord is radiant, making the eyes light up. All right, I'll give you, give you a few seconds. You should have, you should, again, from this, you should have four words written down. All right, let's go to verse nine. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinance of the Lord, ordinances of the Lord are reliable and altogether righteous. Got it? Let's go to verse 10. They are more desirable than gold, than an abundance of pure gold and sweeter than honey dripping from a honeycomb, verse 11. In addition, your servant is warned by them, and in keeping them, there is an abundant reward. You got it? All right, so what you should have written down was the synonym for the word of God, and its adjective or the word that described it all right and i'm gonna i'm gonna show you what i'm i'm gonna show you what i'm talking about right here all right i'm gonna go through i'm gonna go through my list all right and show you what i'm talking about so here we go so the word of god described in psalm 19 all right so it says the instruction or king james uses the word law is perfect okay verse seven verse seven instruction perfect you got it all right now let me just let me just jump in here real quick um let me get you guys to join me right here what does the perfect instruction of the lord do for us Okay. Kim Pope said renews one life. Go ahead, uh, go ahead, Sister Pearl. Um, refreshes the soul. Good. Refreshes the soul. That's King James. Um, yeah, the, well, through the amplified, yes, King James. Okay, all right, very good. That's amplified. Very good. All right. Please pay attention to this. That the instruction, the perfect instruction of the Lord, okay? The perfect word of God 
renews one's life or refreshes the soul. Wow. I want you to, I, I just, I want, I want you to see that. I want you to see that subsequent to me taking in the perfect instruction of the Lord, the perfect instruction of the law, the perfect instruction of the word of God, watch this, it renews my life. We shout on Isaiah 40 and 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall, right here, shall renew their strength. So there must be an element or a component in my waiting that involves the word of God. Because the psalmist says, that the law of the Lord renews my life. Wow. Wow. I know we're talking about God sitting in judgment, you know, over sin and disobedience, but I, I need to establish something about the word of God for us tonight. Before we can, before we can even get into God being the judge, the righteous judge, we got to first establish the standard that he uses to make his judgments. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? You cannot try to defend the laws of a state if you don't know what the law says. I wish I had some attorneys on here with me tonight. It's impossible. It's impossible. If you don't know statute, if you don't know law, you cannot defend somebody in court. Help me somebody. Help me somebody. All right, I got I got to move on. And so you should have written down instruction and perfect if you're using the uh the CSB. All right, then we got testimony and trustworthy. Testimony and trustworthy. Still out of verse seven. Testimony and trustworthy. Or as King James says uh, for the word trustworthy, sure. All right, you got it? Then he says, from verse 8, precepts or statutes in King James and right. The precepts of the Lord. Again, instruction, testimony, and precepts are all words used synonymously of the word of God. So the word of God is perfect. The word of God is trustworthy. The word of God is right. Are you getting this tonight? Command, right? King James says commandments, all right? The command of the Lord is radiant, radiant. Somebody jump on here with me real quick and, 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 and explain to everyone what radiant is radiant radiant talk to me <clears throat> um something radiant would be um extremely uh pure um that um that that light would be able to go through mm. okay all right radiant the command of the Lord is, is radiant. Good, good. That's Thank you, Daisy. On uh, Facebook Live, Daisy says luminous. That's a great word. Luminous, radiant. The command of the Lord is radiant. 
something bright. Thank you, Miss Emily on Facebook Live. The command of the Lord is radiant. Y'all got it? So, so look, our synonyms for the word of God. Wait a minute, I see somebody coming in. Shiny. Thank you, Alvin, on, uh, on Zoom. Alvin says shiny. I like it. Look here. Our synonyms for the word of God right here in Psalm 19. Instruction. Testimony. Precepts. Command. Okay. And then our adjectives. The instruction is perfect. The testimony is trustworthy. The precepts are right. The commands are radiant. But that's not all. If you go to verse nine, there is one in verse nine. This word ordinances. All right. And in the in the uh, in the CSB. It says the ordinances of the Lord are reliable and altogether righteous. The ordinances of the Lord are reliable and righteous. I don't mean to go off on a tangent here, but I just want to throw this out there for us tonight, that there are people today who argue that the Bible, the word of God is not infallible. And they try to go through the Bible and argue that there is error and errancy in the Bible. When the Bible testifies of itself that it is perfect, it is trustworthy, it is right, it is radiant, it is reliable, and it is righteous. Do y'all get that? And if this perfect, trustworthy, right, radiant, reliable, and righteous word is the standard by which God judges all things or you know weighs all things in the balance, then watch this, then his judgments must be perfect, trustworthy, right, radiant, reliable, and right. Does that make sense tonight? I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to give I'm trying to give uh, everybody time to write these down because perhaps I moved a little too quickly through through the exercise uh, when we you know when we separated the verses. But I want to make sure that everybody gets this written down. All right. And uh, if I move forward and you uh, you were not able to get it, uh, you can always go back to Facebook Live uh, to, to our Facebook page and you can you can review this recording. right so the instruction of the lord is perfect the testimony of the lord is trustworthy the precepts of the lord are right the commands of the lord are radiant the ordinance of the lord are reliable and righteous get this that word law given in in the king james or instruction that is used in uh the csb this word is the Hebrew word Torah. Okay. Listen, whenever you hear, particularly um, in, in Jewish circles or around church, when you hear somebody speaking of the Torah, they are speaking about the Jewish law that as it as it was rendered between the books of Genesis and Deuteronomy, the Torah. The first five books of the Bible are called in Hebrew, 
the Torah because they are the books of law. Y'all got it? And this word Torah means a precept or a statute. All right. Some of us will understand a precept or statute in this way. Mama said when she left the house, don't throw the ball in my house. Lord have mercy. That's a precept and a statute. And th listen, there was a serious consequence that went along with disobedience. Ask me how I know. <laughs> precept. And so the Torah, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, the Torah are the precepts and statutes that God gave to Israel as to how they should live. Y'all got it? Torah. And then this, this, this verse says that, watch this, that the that the law of the Lord is, is perfect. And this word perfect, uh, this Hebrew word for perfect means complete or without blemish. Listen, listen. If God says that, hit, watch this, that his law is complete, that means that is infallible. It's without blemish. The law of the Lord is perfect from verse seven. Then it says that the testimony of the Lord is trustworthy. The testimony of the Lord is trustworthy. All right. The Hebrew word that's used for testimony uh, literally means testimony or witness. All right, the witness of the word of God, the witness of God is trustworthy, all right? Sometimes in the work that I do, attorneys will have to put on evidence, all right? Because they're trying to prove their case. And in order to corroborate their story, they will call witnesses. People who have experienced whatever the thing that's going on, you know, as the focus of the trial. We together? A witness. They will either be deemed as a reliable source or an unreliable, and if it's unreliable, then what they're saying cannot be substantiated. It is hearsay, most likely. Oh boy. And this says that the testimony of the Lord, the witness of the Lord, watch this, is sure. That word is firm and faithful. In other words, you can take that to the bank. Yeah. Are we together? All right. The testimony of the Lord is trustworthy. I got to hasten on. My time is running out. The precepts of the Lord are right. And that word precepts in Hebrew is the word mandate. Mandate. Y'all get me? The precepts of the Lord are right. The command of the Lord is radiant. And that Hebrew word for command is a command, whether it's human or divine. Command. Everybody understands what a command is. 
It's radiant. And finally, the ordinances of the Lord are right and righteous. And that word ordinances or judgments really means verdict. All right. Y'all got it? So look, you got to remember, we've just kind of laid it out in Psalm 19, verses 7 through 11, that the word of God is the standard of justice by which God weighs all things. Remember, <laughs> remember, and I believe it's in the book of Daniel where you find this language. When, when, uh, Ah, what was the king's name? Bel Shazar, I believe is his name. Bel Shazar. The handwriting showed up on the wall. And when it was translated, it says, you have been weighed in the balance and found wanting. Which means that when, when God compared what that king was doing, he compared it to what God's word has said. And he came up short. Lord have mercy. And to be very honest with you, there's not one of us living today of whom that same inference is not true. Because Romans 3.23 says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. If the truth be told, we have all been weighed in the balance and we have all been found wanting. Lord have mercy. But thank God for his grace and his mercy. And so the word of God is the standard of justice by which God weighs all things. I'm not finished with the verse yet. Not finished with the verse yet because verse 10 says that the instruction of the law, the testimony of the law, the precepts of the law, the command of the law, the ordinance of the Lord, watch this, are more desirable than gold, than the purest gold. You got to get this. You got to get this. That the instruction of the Lord, that the precept, the testimony of the Lord, the precepts of the Lord, the command of the Lord, the ordinances of the Lord are, watch this, are more desirable than pure gold. And I raised this for us tonight because we stated at the front of this lesson that the Bible reveals God's judgment for disobedience and sin. Watch this. And the thing ah, that helps prevent us, Lord have mercy, from being judged for that 
is our ability to take in and live out the word of God. Do you realize tonight that God never called you to do church stuff? Oh boy. I know that's going to make some folk mad. Yeah, God never called us to do church stuff. What he called us to was lives of obedience to him. And the outworking of our obedience ought to line up with the, you know, with the, with the group of people that he's called with the collective that he is called to be the church. My, my, my. My, my, my. My, my, my. The thing that is to be desired more than anything is his word, the instruction of the Lord, the testimony of the Lord, the precepts of the Lord, the command of the Lord, the ordinances of the Lord. You got it? And then watch this at verse number 11 and we, we gonna, we gonna pull the train into the station. Notice that the word of God does two things for us at least. The word of God warns us, but when we keep it, it rewards us. The word of God warns us, and when we keep it, it rewards us. Y'all got it? Look. Write this down, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 14. The word of God warns us. For God will bring every act to judgment, including every hidden thing, whether good or evil. You know what that is? That's a warning. You got it? Look, I got another one for you. Write this down. John 12, 48. John 12, 48. The one who rejects me and doesn't receive my sayings has this as his judge. The word I have spoken will judge him on the last day. Wow. Wow. I told you. The standard of justice that God uses is his word. That's John 12, 48. I got one more here. Hebrews 9, 27. And just as it is appointed for people to die once, and after this, judgment. That's a warning. See that? The word of God warns us. The psalmist writes in Psalm 19 that your servant is warned by the instruction, by the testimony, by the precepts, by the command, by the ordinances. I get warned. Listen, some of us some of us like to push the limits on warnings. Oh boy. I knew. I ain't gonna call the whole name, but I knew when my mother said to me, I ain't gonna say it no more. Lord have mercy. If she, if my mother ever got to the place where she said to me, that's the last time. I'm not going to say it anymore. I knew in that moment, 
that I needed to get right with God <laughs> and do it now. <laughs> Are y'all with me tonight? All right, so the, the word of God warns us. But then watch this. We got we to gotta shut it down. The word of God rewards us. The word of God rewards us. That verse number 11 says, in addition, your servant is warned by them. But then it says, and in keeping them, there is an abundant reward. Get this, you want to write this down. Second Corinthians chapter five and verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each may be repaid for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. You see that? There's a reward. There's a reward. There's a reward for keeping the instruction of the Lord, the testimony of the Lord, the precepts of the Lord, the command of the Lord, the ordinances of the Lord. There's a reward. But then 2 Timothy 4.8 says this, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge will give me on that day. And not only to me, but to all those who have loved his appearing. That's a reward. That's a reward. If you remember just a few verses prior to that, Paul said, I'm ready to be poured out like a drink off. He said, I know the time of my departure is at hand and I'm ready to be poured out as a drink off. And then he says that famous that famous, uh, that famous verse that we like to quote so much, that I fought a good fight, finished my course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me the crown of right. But listen, listen, you can't get to henceforth if you don't keep his word. Are we together? Are we together? Everybody wants the henceforth, but we don't want to do the to keep his word part. Come on, y'all. One more, because our time is up. Revelation chapter two, verse 10. Don't be afraid of what you're about to suffer. Look, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison to test you, and you will experience affliction for 10 days. Here it is right here. Be faithful to the point of death. And I will give you the crown of life. Rewards. Got it? All right, listen. Thank you guys for joining us again tonight. And um, for our direction, it's going to be the same as it was for last time. Over the next seven days, I want you to conduct your own revelatory study of God's character and create a list of his character traits as revealed in scripture. This, listen, I, I'm, listen, I'm doing this, I'm repeating this exercise for you, all right, so that you will dig into the word of God. You will learn on your own the character traits of God. You'll dig into the word of God. You'll find this out for yourself. So that, watch this, so that you will have, that's the point of making this list. So you'll have a resource to draw from. You know what I mean? You have a resource to draw from that you'll know him to be more than just you know, bread and a starving land and a shelter and a time of storm. You know, you, you get to know what, watch this, what his character is when you need him. Does that make sense? All right. And, you know, you, you don't have to, you know, you don't have to submit it to me because this is for your edification. But if you want to, G, I, I, you know, I'd be happy to see it, you know, to see the work that you're doing. 
And so, gosh, thank you, man. Thank you guys for joining us tonight. Our biblical affirmation is the same, Ephesians 2 and 10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. And after you read that verse, I want you to speak this over yourself. I am created with a purpose, for a purpose, on purpose. That's your affirmation. Once again, thanks for joining us. This has been uh, On the Move to Discipleship, the midweek Bible study with St. Luke Church, the church on the move in Berryville, Virginia. Before we go tonight, I want to remind everyone and invite you to join us on February the 19th and February the 6th, uh, 26th, boy, I almost messed that up. February 19th, February 26th. February 19th, we will be, um, we'll be hosting uh, an exclusive virtual showing of the movie Emmanuel. <clears throat> and you can go to our Facebook page uh, and scroll through and find the registration link. We have limited space, and I can tell you that our spaces are filling uh, pretty quickly. So please, 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 if you want to be a part of that great event, we're going to have uh, a guest moderator to moderate and facilitate um, an open forum discussion following the movie presentation on the 19th. And then on the 26th, on the 26th, the following week, uh, we are hosting again virtually um, another presentation, a musical presentation that celebrates our history uh, from past to present. Not just, listen, you want to get this, it's not just going to be focused on church music. All right. So you need to understand that, that, the, that the, you know, the history of our people is not just church music, <laughs> okay? Um, so, you know, you need to understand, uh, but it's going to be an awesome presentation. Um, again, our, the registration is available on our Facebook page. If you would please go to our St. Luke Baptist Church Facebook page, you can find that information. All right, and if not, you can always email me and I can send you the registration links. I wanna thank you for being with us tonight. And uh, I pray uh, God's greatest blessing upon you. I pray that you'll get connected to the instruction of the Lord, the testimony of the Lord, the precepts of the Lord, the command of the Lord, and the ordinances of the Lord so that you will be warned and rewarded. God bless you tonight. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next week when we gather together again for another installment of On the Move to Discipleship. God bless you. Y'all have a good night.